Hey, Brandon here. Welcome to the channel and thanks for tuning in. It is summer scouting time, everybody. It is June. We got two or three months before college football starts and the NFL for that matter. And I am digging deep into the 2025 rookie class, man. The 2024 class, I'm going to hand over to the other YouTubers out there. But on this channel, it's all about getting you ready for the 2025 rookie class. All right, I got my big board, my top 35 Pretty much 2025 players that I expect to be drafted in rookie drafts next year. All right. So I'm going to be giving you guys four tiers. I'm going to give you my top 35. We're going to briefly talk about these players. Um, you know, we got another whole year of college football left. So things are going to change. It's going to be kind of uh, guys are going to move into tiers. But anyway, these are the top 35 players that I think I'm going to be keeping a close eye on throughout the fall, throughout college football season. Um, and we're going to be scouting them really in depth. My podcast co-host, Jason D. Rianzo, and I, man, we're watching the All-22 film. If you're interested in really finding uh, and you know watching these guys in depth in All-22 film, man, hit me up on the email below. Subscribe to my dashboard subscribers. I can't put All-22 film breakdowns on this YouTube channel. I had them there before, and they almost shut me down. I had to remove them all, so I have to put them somewhere else. But if you're interested in accessing them where we actually watch games, break down tape, hit me up via email, and I'll give you a two-week trial to my dashboard subscription. It's pretty cool. It's only $25 a year, and it's got databases for the 2026 class, 2027 class, as well as next year's 2025 class. All right, let's not waste any more time. Let's get to it, man. All right, these are, I'm going to call this Brandon's Big Board 2025 Rookies. If you play Devi and C2C, I'm also going to be putting out a video very shortly, uh, very similar to this one, where I'm going to be giving you my top 35 Devi assets, all right? And that that's going to include the 2025, 2026, 2027 classes. But today's show, it's all about the 2025 class, all right? So I'm going to go, I'm going to break them into four tiers, my tier one, all right? Let's get started. These are uh, players that I believe are going to get day one draft capital, round one draft capital, okay? I'm not going to go in depth on these guys. I want to make this show uh, pretty, um, you know, pretty quick, but I at least want to identify players. So, you know, if you play Dynasty, like I said, Fantasy, and you want an early look at next year's class, man, these are the players that you should be watching this fall. These are the players that I believe have the best chance of hitting our Dynasty rosters. All right, tier one, let's get right started, all right? Now, the tiers here, uh, I have them kind of in order, but maybe not. Um, so it's not exactly how I would draft them, but, you know, it's kind of how I expect them maybe to come off the board within the tiers, all right? I'm going to start off with two wide receivers here, okay? Now, there's a good chance that, uh, you know, Carson Beck is going to be number three here I'm going to talk about shortly. But the first two guys I think that are going to come off the board that are going to be exciting fantasy assets in 2025 are the two wide receivers, Tori McMillan from Arizona, Luther Burden from Missouri, uh, Tet McMillan, 6'5", 205 pounds. Reminds me of like a Drake London type build. Big guy, physical, good hands, um, really exciting player. And Luther Burden is more of a smaller guy, 5'11", 208, more of like a smaller build, versatile guy around the line of scrimmage. Both of these guys um, are really projected to be first-round wide receivers. Um, and I, you know, could change, but right now, I think these are the two wide receivers, uh, the two top wide receivers in college football that have the best chance of uh, getting the draft capital that we want from our dynasty players, as well as uh, early round one rookie picks next year. All right, number three, I got Carson Beck, uh, quarterback from Georgia, six foot four, two 220 pounds. Now, he's the only quarterback I got in Tier 1, right? This might be a situation next year, kind of like 2022, right? Kenny Pickett was drafted in Pittsburgh in the middle of the first round, and we didn't see anybody. Desmond Ritter got round three draft capital and beyond after that, right? But as we know, this past year, man, Bo Nix, Penix, and all those guys getting drafted in round one, Maybe these other guys, we're going to talk about these other quarterbacks in the class. But right now, I think the only, there's only one guy that warrants a round one draft capital, and I really believe that's Carson Beck. So I got him here at number three, all right? We're going to run through. We're going to get three wide receivers. Uh, it's going to be wide receiver heavy again, I think. Um, you know, it's kind of the typical thing in fantasy, right? In Dynasty, we're really wanting those pass catchers. But Amika Buka from Ohio State, six foot one, two 205 pounds, came back for his senior year, should be a starter there, should really elevate his draft stock and be the number one receiver with Jeremiah Smith, who's an exciting incoming freshman. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, that... Uh, is going to be maybe the next Marvin Harrison Jr. So if you don't know who Jeremiah Smith is coming into Ohio State, uh, that's a name you're going to want to do some research on. All right, Evan Stewart, 
Uh, Texas A&M wide receiver, six foot one, 175 pounds on the smaller side, but he's got good hands, ball skills, exciting player. He's now in Oregon transfers. You know, the transfer portal is making these guys move all over the place. So now he is in Oregon. Um, so, you know, should be the number one receiver there with Troy Franklin now moving on to the NFL. All right, Travis Hunter, I have here at number six. Now, big debate whether or not he's going to play wide receiver, cornerback. I think he could be really good at either. Both pay very well. So, I mean, the way these wide receivers are getting paid right now, Justin Jefferson, you know, getting bank right now. Um, you know, Travis Hunter is going to have his choice whether or not he wants to play uh, wide receiver or cornerback. But in the event that he declares as a wide receiver, I have him here. Um, you know, at number six, I think he's warranted as a first round talent. Now, two two players left here in the first in, in my tier one. I've got Trevion Henderson and Quinshawn Judkins. All right, both very similar in size. You know, Henderson listed at 5'10", 212. Judkins transfers from Ole Miss going to Ohio State. So Ohio State's going to have the best two running backs, I believe, going to the NFL draft next year. Um, it's going to be a great one-two punch there at Ohio State. Judkins, 5'11", 210. They're kind of different players. Trevion Henderson uh, is more of like a you know flashier, nimble kind of guy. And Queen John Judkins is that hard-nosed, physical, you know, downhill runner who's got some uh, lateral ability as well. But either one of those guys, I think, might slip into the early you know, I'm sorry, late day one draft capital, all right? So I only got eight guys in my tier one right now. Again, it's early. I'm going to be updating this show probably monthly throughout the summer as I watch Moral 22 film and as we get through the football season. So make sure you hit that subscribe button because I'll be doing updates to this show exactly just like this one on a regular basis. All right, dear tier two. All right, my tier two are guys that are going to get most likely early day two draft capital, all right? <clears throat> and I've got a combination of you know wide receivers and 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 all sorts of guys in here. All right, my first I'm going to go Trevor Etienne, um, Georgia running back. Transfers from Florida. Had a little off season trouble. Five foot nine, two hundred thirteen pounds. Really like his size and build. I think he's got some really good footwork, lateral ability. He's got power. And his older brother is playing for the Jaguars, so he's rubbing shoulders with all those pros in the off season. And I think he's going to have a really good year at Georgia if he explodes there. Um, he's going to be an early day two guy, without a doubt. Nick Anderson, exciting. One of my favorite wide receivers, exploded last year. He will be a true junior next year. Had a great season at Oklahoma last year. Six foot four, 209 pounds. You watch this kid, he kind of reminds me of C.D. Lamb a little bit. That's my kind of player comp for him. If he comes out again with another big year, keep an eye on Nick Anderson from Oklahoma. I think he has the ability with Jackson Arnold there as an up-and-coming good quarterback tight end who would be on my Devi big board, um, you know, is definitely, you know, a, a player on the rise as well. So Nick Anderson could have a great season here at Oklahoma. All right, Ashton Genty, Boise State running back, five foot nine, 215 pounds. This kid is an explosive playmaker running between the tackles. He's got some speed, really exciting player. I like him a lot. Damian Martinez, one of my favorite running backs. He is now going from Oregon State in Miami, is going to lead that backfield down there in Miami. Should have a great season. Six foot, 232 pounds. Love the size. Love his build. He's got really some good explosion for that size. He's one of my favorite running backs in the 2025 draft class. Nick Singleton I have here. Little bit of projection. You know, my son goes to Penn State. I'm always watching Penn State games. Um, and man, he, Nick Singleton, big recruit coming out of uh, high school. Goes to Penn State. Just not, has not translated for those big wow moments that we're looking for. But man, the kid has got skill, and I'm really hoping new OC in Penn State, um, him and uh, Aller, uh, I'm sorry, Katron Allen, who we're going to talk about here very shortly, two great running backs at Penn State, I'm really taking a projection stab here that Nick Singleton really rebounds and has a solid second or third season. He will be a true junior this, this year as well. Coming in at number 14, Colston Loveland seems to be the best tight end in the class right now, being projected in the first round in a lot of mocks that I'm looking at, but you know, I'm just not seeing that kind of athleticism like a Brock Bowers, but he's a good player. Six foot five, 245 pounds. Should be the guy, um, get early day two draft capital. I, I can see right now him being, uh, you know, one of the top tight ends taken. So I got him here in tier two. All right. So I got three quarterbacks right now that could get early day two draft capital. I'm going to preface this kind of like we talked about before. We got Shadur Sanders from Colorado, six foot two, 215 pounds. I think he just needs to improve his pocket presence, holds on to the ball way too much. And I'm not sure 
NFL franchises are going to want to deal with his dad, to be quite honest with you. I mean, there's just a lot of baggage that comes with Dion always out there saying, my son's going to only play for these teams and all that. So I don't know if he's going to get round one draft capital. And I, if he doesn't get round one draft capital or is not projected to get round one draft capital, I can see his dad saying, you're coming back for you know another final season in college and you're going to continue to wait until you get that draft capital. I don't see him as a first round talent right now, but who knows? Bo Nix got first round talent, so you know anything could happen. Jackson Dart, Ole Miss wide re- or uh, quarterback, six foot two, one hundred ninety five pounds. Um, you know, really tough physical player. Really flashed last year. You know, my only question really if if it's if it's round one draft capital, if in fact that Kiffin offense down there at Ole Miss lends itself to the development of an NFL quarterback. Because for me, from a scouting standpoint, NFL quarterbacks, it's all right up here. A lot of these guys have the physical traits, size, arm strength, but it's the mental processing that is really the number one thing. Um, and being able to read defenses and getting off your first read. And I'm not sure the old Miss offense, you know, really warrants that kind of, you know, I guess, uh, intangibles down there. But anyway... Big season ahead, man. Two great receivers he's got. We're going to talk about these receivers that uh, Jackson Dart's going to be throwing the ball to. I'm really excited about him. Um, so he has the ability. Quinn Ewers, okay, got got these three quarterbacks stacked here. Texas uh, quarterback. He's going to be the starter this year, even with Arch Manning breathing down his neck. Six foot two, 195 pounds. The thing with Quinn, Quinn Ewers for me, if you watch his film, and trust me, I've been watching film playing Debbie format. I've been watching all the players that we're talking about for two years, scouting them, all 22 films. Watched a ton of Quinn Ewers as well. Is you know his his long ball accuracy and ball placement needs to improve, right? He's just too inaccurate on a regular basis, and he really doesn't offer a whole lot of rushing upside from a fantasy standpoint. You know, we want those guys that are a little bit mobile who run the ball. I mean, he rushed for 75 total yards in 2023. So, you know, he's not somebody who's going to offer a lot with his legs. So I think his fantasy value from a 2025 rookie standpoint might be a little capped, all right? All right, so at number 18 and 19, two wide receivers that I think are going to get early day two draft capital. Isaiah Bond, 5'11", 182 pounds, just cut up for all 22 films for my dashboard subscribers and posted them on our Slack chat. We've been chatting on the Slack chat about you know, what we see in his skill set, right? So he is a Alabama wide receiver who now transfers to Texas, playing with Quinn Ewers, should be the number one guy. There's a lot of talent in that wide receiver room at Texas. Um, but I'd love to see him have a little bit more vertical play. Really was, pre- you know, pretty productive at Alabama, but everything was very short, you know, to the line of scrimmage, wide receiver screens, mesh concepts, you know, 10, 15 yards down the field. Didn't see a lot of vertical, you know, I'm going to beat my DB one-on-one and work the, the boundary or anything like that. So that's what I'll be looking for. But he's got good acceleration, good footwork. He's a twitchy athlete. That's what the NFL is looking for, twitchy athletes. The last guy in tier two, Antoine Wells Jr. This is a guy that I'm higher on than most people. Um, most people don't even talk about Juice Wells. He was hurt last year, playing at uh, South Carolina last year, now transfers to Ole Miss, playing with Jackson Dart. I love Antoine Wells Jr., six foot one, 208 pounds. If he stays healthy this year, and is productive at Old Miss. His draft stock is going to go through the roof. That's why I have him projected here as a early day two guy. All right, tier three, late day two draft capital, early day three draft capital. Can go either way with these guys. Again, we've got another whole year of college football, but this is kind of where I see, based on the last two years of guys getting draft capital, um, where I can see these guys fitting in, right? Most of the running backs are going to be coming off the board late day two, just like this year, round three. And round four, right? So Ollie Gordon, I've got here at six foot one, two hundred eleven pounds. Just cut up an all twenty two film on this YouTube channel. I just posted a buy, sell, or hold for Ollie Gordon. My podcast co host and I, Jason D. Rienzo, broke it down. Is he a buy? Is he a sell? Is he a hold? I'll let you go see that video and and uh, you know see for yourself what our thoughts were. All twenty two films cut up on my dashboard for my dashboard subscribers as well, so you could scout him for yourself if in fact you want to t- hit me up for a two week trial. Um, so Ollie Gordon, big production last year, rushed more yards than anyone, won the Doka Award last year for rushing, should have another very productive season. Don't see him as one of the elite running backs right now, given his running style. I'm probably on an island like that because he's RB1 for a ton of draft guys out there, but I don't think they've watched the film. I think they're just putting him there because of his production um, and how many you know yards he ran. But a guy who can catch the ball out of the backfield should have another solid season. Katron Allen here, 5'11", 211 pounds, another Penn State running back. Looking, again, sometimes I like Allen more. Sometimes I like Singleton more. They seem to go back and forth when you watch Penn State games of who seems to be more productive and he's got that 
that wiggle and lateral ability that running backs need. Um, but and nonetheless, I could see him with a good season. He may come back for his senior year. He is also a true junior. Another true junior, a Marion Hampton. I got here, six foot, two hundred twenty pound running back from North Carolina. Uh, he's going to lose a lot of players. He's going to lose, you know. Um, Drake May to the NFL. Offensive line is very shaky. More of a one-cut north-south runner. He's got some wiggle. He's got some good size. Hoping to see some more lateral agility in his game this year coming up. Number 23 in Tier 3, we got Jordan James, 5'10", 205 pounds. Bucky Irving is now you know, in the NFL. Jordan James has that Oregon backfield really to himself. I think if they fed him the rock, good size, he um, has got some lateral ability as well. He's got some really good acceleration, some explosion to his game. Excited to see he, you know, continue to, you know, really young, good player. He's going to be a true junior too. So there's a chance that some of these guys that we're talking about might come back and be 2026 draft class guys, but they're, these, all these players are eligible. So we're going to talk about them. All right. We're going to go on a little wide receiver run here. Trey Harris, six foot two, 205 pounds, another Ole Miss wide receiver. So we talked about Jackson Dart having two good targets and Juice Wells and Trey Harris. Trey Harris, I was a little surprised he didn't declare for the NFL draft last year. He's coming back, but these two receivers, I wouldn't be surprised, don't get out of day two um, in next year's NFL draft. All right, Antonio Williams from Clemson, another true junior, 5'11", 190, 190 pounds. Was nicked up last year, but man, watching his freshman tape, uh, Jason DiRienzo and I, man, you know, big fans of Antonio Williams. More of a slot wide receiver, but really shifty, good acceleration, good change of direction skills. And that's what the wide receiver is all about. Space creation is number one in my book, watching and scouting wide receivers. Antonio Williams has the ability to make guys, you know, create space for himself out on the field. All right. A different kind of receiver that's going to win in a different way. Alec A. Manor from Stanford, man, go back on this YouTube channel, go type in his name, and go watch his Colorado game, man. He really just exploded. Maybe one of the best second halves of football I've ever seen this guy. He just dominated this, the uh, uh, the Colorado DBs. And I think uh, Travis Hunter was one of the guys that he was working against. But man, big receiver, six foot two, 210 pounds. He's a different kind of receiver than a small slot guy, a boundary guy who's played inside and outside. He's got that versatility, big receiver. Um, I could see his draft stock with another solid season if there's a team out there looking for a big bodied receiver you know, uh, going to the NFL draft. All right, Ben Urasek, all right? He is a tight end in Georgia, all right? He played at Stanford, was nicked up last year. He now, with Brock Bowers in the NFL, is gonna be the man at Georgia, all right? And I think him and Carson Beck are gonna have a great season. Benjamin Urasek is a little underrated, under the radar. Go watch some of his games at Stanford. He's athletic. He's got, you know, really good, uh, you know, catchability. He's got really good after the catchability. Uh, I love his toughness and his, he's got that dog in him. You can just see when he plays on the field and he's, he's a tough football player. I'm really excited to see Urasek really blossom this year. All right. Barry and Brown, number 28. Um, again, we're in tier three here. Barry and Brown, six foot one, 166 pounds. Kentucky wide receiver. We did an all 22 film breakdown on him. And I also did a buy, sell, and hold show on this YouTube channel if you want to get a deep dive on his scouting report, his draft capital. But I think he's a, you know, a, a late day two, early day three explosive player. Now he's going to be comped. I'm going to come out right now and say he is going to be comped to Xavier Worthy because of two things his speed and his size. At six foot one, 166 pounds, he's on the thin side. Um, and he's got speed. He's going to be a great special teams player for an NFL team. The guy is a great punt kick returner in college, so he brings that versatility of not being able to play wide, just wide receiver, but also can you know contribute to special teams. Um, but he's got to work on his hands, and he's got to get a little bit more physical for me. But um, player nonetheless that is high on a lot of draft boards. All right, the last guy I got in tier three is Luke Lachey, tight end from Iowa, who was also nicked up last year, six foot six, two hundred and fifty three pounds. But he got hurt in 2023. He's back for his senior season. He is an Iowa tight end. We know Iowa produces tight ends um, in that program. Another big physical kid who's got some athleticism. So we're going to keep our eye on Luke Lachey. All right, tier four. These are guys that are early day three and with big seasons in 2024 could possibly do well um, and get into tier three, maybe into tier two. But there's, there's the names that need to be on our radar and we'll have to see as we go through the process, you know, where they go. All right, I got Jalen Milrow, 6'2", 220-pound quarterback from Alabama. 
you know, I was cutting up my all 22 film Isaiah Bond and I'm just watching Jalen Milrow. I'm just struggling with seeing him really get any kind of, I could see him coming back. I think he has one more year of eligibility after 2024. His just mechanics, his inconsistency. He tries to run too much. He's got to stay in the pocket and read. I know they have a whole new coaching staff. So I'm really interested to see how Jalen Milrow with the, uh, the the new coaching system can come in and kind of get him stable and maybe be a little bit better of a passer and not so much of a runner. So, but the NFL is going to love his size, his leadership ability, and his ability to run. He's a big, thick kid who's got some wheels, like an Anthony Richardson type kind of prospect going into college. Connor Wegman right here is a quarterback, Texas A&M, six foot three, two hundred fifteen pounds. There's just a lot of projection with Connor Wegman that he's going to be an NFL draft, you know, possible selection next year. I'm just not buying it right now. I think the kid has hardly played in college. He's been hurt constantly. You know, love his size at six three, two fifteen, but he's I got to see it on the field. So I think that he is more of a 2026 prospect but there's guys out there talking him up right now as a 2025 sleeper in the quarterback room so we'll have to see he's got to go back play at texas a&m play for a good year and put some good tape on for us to get for me personally to get a little bit more excited about him dane key another quarter uh, kentucky wide receiver six foot three 195 pounds playing with barry and brown good receiver I think he could elevate his draft stock with another good year. Devin Neal coming in at 33, 5'11", 210 pounds. I'm probably lower on Devin Neal than most, um, but he didn't declare last year for the NFL draft, and I think there was a reason that I did all 22 film breakdowns, again, on my dashboard, if you want to look at them. He's just not as a physical runner as I'd like to see in, in football, so that's why I have him down here. Number 34, Jaden Ott. He was the first buy, sell, and hold show I did about three weeks ago. Go check that out. California running back, six foot, 200 pounds. Really flashed two years ago. He came out and caught a bunch of balls uh, out of the backfield. Had some really good tape and production. Not sure what kind of interior runner he is going to be at the NFL. That's why I got him down here as an early day three guy. I think he's more of a third down kind of back who would uh, help a... Um, you know, an NFL, you know, be part of a committee. All right, Deion Burks, five foot 11, 195 pound wide receiver, transfers from Purdue to Oklahoma. He's going to be playing with Nick Anderson. Great one two punch there. Can see him really elevating his draft stock. Draft stock. If there's one player on this list that could really elevate his game with a solid season, it could be Deion Burks. So that's 35 players. I'm going to give you two more because I've always been a giver. All right, number 36, I'm just going to give you two more names. Tory Horton, six foot two, 190 pound Colorado State wide receiver. And then Donovan Edwards, Michigan running back, six foot one, two hundred and ten pounds. Uh, you want to just keep, kind of keep an eye on these two players. Um, they they could you know with good seasons elevate their draft stock. All right, there you guys got it, man. That is Brandon. That is my Brandon's big board twenty twenty five rookies. All right, like I said, I'm going to be doing a big board show like this for for my top twenty thirty five Devi prospects. That's going to be a show where it's going to include 2025, 2026, and 2027 prospects. So again, you play Devi, you play Fantasy, and you're looking for a channel out there, man, that's going to start like really giving you the future and taking a look, man. We're scouting these players hard. My, my podcast co-host, Jason, and I, man, we are watching the All-22 film. I'm going to be posting all sorts of good stuff on this channel. Thank you for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Please help me grow the channel. Um, I hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks.